On the Hemingway Walk, we look into intriguing hidden courtyards in the charming fifth arrondissement of Paris, the Mouffetard area, and we stand outside the address that Hemingway would have lived with Hadley Richardson for a period of 18 months, and it was his first permanent address in the capital. And quoting from Hemingway's A Movable Feast, we try to discover what Paris would have been like back in the 1920s, and it was a different universe then to what we have today. We mix in a little dab of Woody Allen's marvelous film Midnight in Paris, and where he filmed the key scene from Midnight in Paris. We also talk James Joyce, as well as George Orwell, a personal favorite of mine, and we'll see where George Orwell would have lodged and uh, started writing down and out in Paris and London. We also visit the church of Saint-Étienne-du-Mont with the most fabulous rood screen inside and on the ancient hill where today we have the Pantheon. Remember that the stone of Paris, this lovely limestone, it cleans up so nicely it's sometimes difficult to believe that the buildings are as old as they in fact are. The fifth arrondissement is rich in history. I really enjoy this walk because the streets are charming. It's a very ancient area and um, going back to Gallo-Roman time. So we're coming into Hemingway Stamping Ground and at this address, which is today La Maison de Verlaine, there is a plaque that tells us that Hemingway lived at this address and it's not true. Hemingway never lived here and it's surprising, isn't it, that a historical plaque can get it wrong when you've got so few words on the plaque. And in, in fact, Hemingway never lived here. He lived round the corner, as we shall see, but he did have his writing studio in this address and this is where a movable feast turns into a gastronomic guide to Paris in the 1920s and it's uh, surprising the number of times he can actually itemize the things that he ate in the capital more than 30 years ago because of course as we said he wrote a movable feast at the end of his life you had flower sellers that gathered on this square in large numbers at the end of the day and the girls, they tried to revive their wilting flowers by pouring purple dye on the petals. And Hemingway describes the dye trickling off and forming rivulets in the cobblestones of the Contrescarpe Square. And it's such a finely observed detail. It illustrates what a visual writer Hemingway was and how he notices things that perhaps would escape most people's attention. Uh, this passageway, we have associations with Victor Hugo goes Les Miserables and remember that when Victor Hugo wrote Les Miserables he set scenes in real places to give authenticity and this is the passageway that Jean Valjean runs down with young Cosette in his arms and he's basically trying to escape the detective who's hot on his heels in the form of Russell Crowe. Oh sorry no. <laughs> So fans of Midnight in Paris will certainly recognize this spot because that is where Owen Wilson sits on the steps of the church of Saint-Étienne-du-Mont. The bells of Saint-Étienne-du-Mont chime midnight. Uh, a vintage car comes up this winding street. Owen Wilson is invited by these drunken revelers to a party. He thinks it's mistaken identity, but when he gets in the car, he's whisked back in a time machine, initially to the 1920s, where he meets all of his literary heroes, of course, including Hemingway and the likes of F. Scott Fitzgerald and Zelda. If you want to be a writer, you have to do your apprenticeship in the City of Light because you pluck inspiration from the very air that you breathe and she's shaking her fist up at the tenant on the second floor, shouting, how many times have I told you, don't squash the bed bugs on the wallpaper, <laughs> why can't you flick them out the window like everyone else? We all loved it. It was a fabulous conversation, he was funny. And that was the signal to bring out the dynamite. So. <laughs> he was very intelligent, gave us a lot of information. I thought he was wonderful. It was fantastic, it was edifying. I'm going to read Joyce, Hemingway, uh, I'm going to read Orwell. It, it, just so much information and so entertaining. It was fantastic. 
If you're lucky enough as a young man to have lived in Paris, wherever you go for the rest of your life, it stays with you, for Paris is a movable feast. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Absolutely fantastic. Would recommend it to anybody. It was just delightful.